Hey guys, and welcome back to the Turdberg Show. All right, so today's video is about conservation of momentum, but not just momentum, but momentum in two dimensions. So what we've got in this case, we've got a object mass one, we've got another object M2, and what they're gonna do is they're not going to hit, hit in a head-on fashion as what you're probably used to. This is going to be what we call a glancing collision. So let's see if we can do this. Let's clone that first object. And they're going to hit in such a way that they hit like this. So they're going to hit, and they're actually going to have an angle in there. Let's see if we can get a nice little dashed line to represent like, here's this baseline direction that we've got. And so what's going to happen is one object, M1, M1 is going to hit in such a way that it hits and it travels off at an angle. And it tells us in the problem of 33 degrees, and a velocity of 4.28 meters per second. So there's where we get our velocity from. It also told us that that object was traveling at 5.10 meters per second before they collided. So that's kind of like a velocity one initial. So we're used to seeing problems like this. What we're not used to are these angles. So the goal of the problem, it's trying to get you to do this. It wants you to figure out when this other object hits, what velocity and what angle does the other object travel at? Oh, wow, that was crazy. I didn't know I could do that. So what, ob so what velocity, what angle does the other object travel at? So we're looking for this angle, and we're looking for velocity to final. That's what we're looking at. So you should be looking at this going, well, this feels like this should be kind of an easy problem. I promise it really is. It just gets confusing because we're having to keep up with all the X components and all the Y components of these velocities. So when you look at it, say, for example, velocity number one, you've got to think about this object in terms of its X and Y momentum. So it's going to have an X momentum, but it's not going to have a Y momentum. So we know the fundamental equation is M1, V1 initial, plus... Say it with me, M2, V2 initial equals, come on, it's fun for the whole family, M1, V1 final plus M2, V2 final. So there is our massive conservation momentum equation, MV plus MV equals MV plus MV. And hopefully you know that, like when I say it that way, you know that the left are the initials, the right are the finals. So what's going to change in this problem? Well, we're just going to break it down into two parts. And so what we're going to have is a sum of the momentums, and we're going to, have to take a sum of the momentum in the x initial, and that's got to be equal to all our momentums in the x direction final. So all our momentum in the x direction initial has to be conserved in the x direction final. And likewise, the sum of all our momentums in the y direction initial also have to be equal to the sum of all our momentums in the y direction final final. Well, here's what's cool. Basically, the physics in this problem is over. We've addressed it, but you probably need to actually know how to get the numbers in here. So here's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at all my MVs, MV plus MV equals MV plus MV in the X direction to begin with. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through and I'm going to write this M1 V1 equation for the Xs. So I'm going to have an M1 times a velocity one and now x direction initial so what is my velocity one x direction initial well it's 5.10 positive 5.1 because this object doesn't have a velocity in the y direction so my mass one velocity one x initial is a simple 5.1 meters per second plus m2 and so now my question is and again i'm doing x right now what is my velocity to initial in the x direction well if you remember object two was just sitting still so it's x and y velocity initials are both zero so that's just zero equals m1 and so now the question becomes what is the final velocity of m1 in the x direction so notice how i keep explicitly stating that 
what is the final velocity of m1 in the x direction? Velocity 1, x final. So what I want to know is this x component of velocity 1 final. Well, when we look at it, hey, I know how to do this. All I've got to do is multiply this by the cosine of 33, and I'll have it. Matter of fact, I think I've already done it in this calculator. 4.28 cosine 33 is roughly 3.6. Awesome. So I know that this is positive 3.6 meters per second. So here I'm going to come back, and now let's see if we can put this in here. I'd like to keep it with black, please. And so this is 3.6 meters per second. Yes, I'm not putting my units because these problems become junk fest when you write units in there as well. Plus M2 times what is, and we don't know this one. This is what we're looking for. Velocity 2 in the velocity 2 in the x direction final. We do not know what velocity 2's x value is. But now we're going to be able to get it because, cool, check out what happens at this point. As we look at it, all the masses in this problem are the same. And so that's awesome. Uh, if, you did, if you had two different masses, you would obviously have to multiply these out across here. This problem made it a little bit quicker for us. And so the only thing we've got left on the left-hand side, it appears, is 5.1. So we know that 5.1... Get rid of that random little dot on my screen. 5.1 is equal to 3.6 plus V2XF. And now if we look, all we got to do is subtract 3.6 from both sides. And we know that 1.5, positive 1.5 meters per second, that is my velocity to X final. So in other words, here's what I now know. I know that after this collision has taken place, I'm going back up here to the top. I know that, and if I'm doing vectors, I've obviously completely wrecked this problem, so don't hold that against me. But I know that the velocity to x final is, what did we just say? Positive one and a half meters per second. Cool. So I know one of the components of my final velocity so now what I need to find, though, is the other component of my final velocity. In other words, I need to know what velocity 2's y final velocity is. So in order to do that, we're going to do this same mv, 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 mv that we just did, but this time we're going to do it in the y. So in the y direction now, let's see if we can do this one. m1 times what is the initial velocity for m1 in the y direction? Uh, well, it's not moving up or down. It's just moving dead to the right. So it had no initial velocity in that direction. Plus, what is M2's initial Y velocity? Well, remember, M2 was just sitting there hanging out when all of a sudden M1 smacked it, that cruel M1. So it's a zero. And so now is equal to M1 times, so what is M1's final y velocity and to do that we're gonna have to go back up here and so what we've got to actually figure out what is the final velocity what is the final velocity velocity one's y final velocity and to do that we'll just do some basic trig again get my calculator and this time 4.28 sine of 33 degrees is 2.3 meters per second so 2.3 meters per second. Now, if you're really good, you could actually use common sense to solve this Y part of the problem. But let's just do it with the math since we've got it. So going back down to the Y portion of this problem, here's what we know. M1 times, we got the zero, we got zero. And so the final velocity... For one final, it was 2.3, positive 2.3 meters per second, plus M2, and what we are looking for is velocity 2's Y final. And once again, what's beautiful is the M's all cancel out, which is kind of cool because that means that 0 is equal to 
What is zero equal to? 2.3 plus velocity two y final, which, wow, that just means negative 2.3 meters per second is my velocity two y final. Hey, this is where I said you should have been able to use common sense because we can go up to the top. There was no momentum in the y direction initial. The balls have the same mass. So if object one had a positive 2.3 meter per second final velocity, that means the other object had a negative 2.3 meter per second final velocity. So now the only thing that's left is what is the angle, what is the final velocity? And so to find the final velocity, all we would do is Pythagorean, you would take your two velocities, square them, add them up, take the square root, Da, 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 da. I'm just going to write 2.3. The negatives really doesn't matter. We would take that, add it up, take the square root. Uh, you can double check me. I think this one comes out to like 2.8 roughly, something like that. So that ends up our final velocity. For the angle, what I would actually end up doing is using the inverse tangent function. You didn't have to use inverse tangent, except for the fact my pen will no longer write. Hey, that's amazing. Nothing like a glitch in the last few seconds of the video, right? But anyway, let's see if I can actually get my now locked screen to do this. Oh, well. And I'm not actually able to go any further in this video. But listen to me now and hear me later. That would have been funny in the 80s. All you're going to do is go inverse tangent of 2.3 divided by 1.5. And so using the inverse tangent function, you should be able to get your angle... Uh, I've already worked this problem. I think it's 56, 57, something like that. So anyway, guys, hope this video helps you solve these problems in the future, and good luck.